The topic is curettage. Now, what is curettage? Let's see. According to the definition of curettage, uh, it's, the curettage is used in periodontics to mean to scraping the soft tissue wall of the or the inner soft tissue wall of the periodontal pocket. Now, when you know that periodontal pocket is nothing but a pathologically deepened gingival sulcus. Now, this pathologically deepened gingival sulcus, you know the sulcus is always lined by your sulcular epithelium. When this becomes a pocket, then it will become your, the sulcular epithelium will turn out to become your lateral wall of your periodontal pocket. Now, this periodontal pocket, because it is diseased, it is constantly under the influx of lots of microorganisms and their toxins which are released. So, as a result of which, and then there is a Additional to the toxins and the microorganisms, your host is also trying to repair the damaged tissue. So, as a result of which, of all these consequences, there is a constant uh, reparative or a, uh, a kind of an inflammatory process that is constantly running in this lateral wall. Okay, so it keeps getting repaired, and then it keeps, and then there, basically there are. Uh, both the reparative and your inflammatory process side or the destructive process side by side it is going on okay in the lateral wall of the periodontal pocket so that's finally what happens is it will lead to the ulceration of your periodontal or the lateral wall of the periodontal pocket and then this ulceration will start healing from granulation tissue now this granulation tissue is infected granulation tissue so you have to eliminate in order so this curettage is one of the procedure used to remove the it's one of the treatment protocol to treat your periodontal uh, disease uh, or uh, to reduce your periodontal uh, pockets. Okay, so what you do is you use a uh, you specialized instruments like your curettes to remove the soft tissue wall of the pocket, and that's what is curettage. What are the types of curettage? You have various types of curettage depending on. Uh, whether it's gingival curettage, subgingival curettage, or inadvertent curettage. That is one type of classification system that you can classify your curettage into. You have a second class classification depending on what, what is a method of uh, uh, curettage that you're going to do. Whether you're going to do a surgical curettage, or whether that is whether you're using your surgical blades, curettes, etc., or whether you're going to use, do a chemical curettage using chemicals, or whether you're going to do, use your ultrasonic instruments to do the curettage, and that will become your ultrasonic curettage. Let's go see what is your gingival curettage, what is your subgingival curettage, and what is your uh, inadvertent curettage. But before that, why do you think you should do curettage? What is the rationally behind this curettage? First, the main accomplishment is to remove the chronically inflamed granulation tissue that is covering the soft tissue wall of your periodontal pocket. Okay. What are the indications? Where all it is indicated? The first indication can be it is it is actually a part. I told you it is one of the part of the periodontal treatment procedures which is incorporated into your treatment plan in order to remove the or uh, to redu in order to reduce the periodontal pocket so it is basically a pocket therapy now so it can cause it's, it, it it is the main indication is it is a part of new attachment procedure in a moderately, moderately deep infra bony pockets located in inaccessible areas the second indication is it can be done as a non definite procedure means you don't have a definitive goal but you can do it as a non definitive procedure when you're preparing your uh, patient for your periodontal lap surgery and then it is also performed in patients where exclusive surgical procedures are contraindicated. In patients where surgery cannot be performed, it is contraindicated, then you can do a curettage procedure just as a, a definitive procedure in order to treat your periodontal pockets and put them on a regular follow-up. And then your curettage, the another indication is you can also incorporate this curettage as one of the maintenance protocol procedure in or a recall or visit protocol procedure in periodontal diseased patients or periodontally treated patients. Now, how do you do uh, before the procedure? Let's see what is this. Uh, let's talk about what is the surgical curettage and what is this non-surgical. Uh, uh, sorry, what is this gingival curettage? What is the subgingival curettage and what is inadvertent? Gingival curettage meaning to say when you are just trying to scrape the soft tissue wall of the sulcus and then subgingival curettage when you are going quite deep when you are uh, trying to remove the diseased tissue between your gingival margin and your alveolar crest. Okay, that means the brace of you are you're basically uh, going beneath a little bit beneath your base of the pocket and then you are trying to remove the tissue. 
and inadvertent curettage is nothing but it is it is not directed towards doing curettage but the goal of the therapy was to do root planing and while doing the root planing procedure you are unintentionally trying to you are unintentionally removing the soft tissue wall of the pocket and that will become your inadvertent curettage okay now let's go in detail how this procedure is carried out now you can classify them into a basic procedure or a basic technique or else the other techniques the other techniques include your enap that is excisional new attachment procedure or else your ultrasonic curettage and your use of caustic drugs what is the basic technique you infiltrate some local anesthesia and then what do you do you select the proper curettes for example your gracie curettes your gracie curettes are available in different different sizes right and uh, for and uh, they are area specific curettes so if you have to do an anterior curettage then you can pick number 1 2 curette or a number 3 4 curette okay and then what do you do first you correctly adapt the curette edge to the inner soft tissue wall and then you know zero degree angle and then you give a slight obtuse angle greater than 90 degrees in order to redo the curettage with a horizontal stroke okay once you that is once you've finished giving the local anesthesia and then what do you do you try to give a external support through your index finger or your thumb finger to the soft tissue and then you try to uh, scrape the inner soft tissue wall so externally you support the tissue with your finger and then the curette is inserted into the gingival or the pocket uh, into the uh, pocket and then it is moved in a horizontal stroke and your soft tissue is removed so now this you can see your gingival curettage in subgingival curettage you insert the curette more below the base of the pocket and then you try to scrape the soft tissue wall and then you flush it with some irrigants and then if needed you might have to do a suturing and then place a periodontal pack and this would be your elimination of the pocket using your subgingival curettage what is your other techniques that is your excisional new attachment procedure now here you're giving an internal bevel incision you know an internal bevel incision is an incision line or it's one of the horizontal incisions wherein your blade or the incision line is directed towards your alveolar crest so you you give an internal bevel incision and you remove that chunk of tissue and then probably if needed you'll have to go for suturing and place a periodontal pack what is your ultrasonic curettage when you talk about ultrasonic curettage, it means to say you're incorporating some ultrasonic devices in order to scrape the soft tissue wall of the pocket. So here your ultrasonic scalers are used and the ultrasonic vibrations will disrupt this continuity or the tissue continuity and they bring about the removal of this or the epithelium will get totally lifted off. So there will be a removal of the epithelium because of the ultrasonic vibrations created by the ultrasonic scalar. Now this also alters a little bit of the morphological characteristics of your fibroblasts. Now it is a very effective method or manual method which is very effective. It results in decreased inflammation and less removal of your connective tissue when you see curettage when you want to do curettage using some caustic drugs the important drugs that are used for bringing about curettage would be a sodium sulfide your antiformin and phenol but the main disadvantage of uh, using these caustic drugs for, do, uh, for uh, doing the curettage would be the extent of tissue destruction is not limited. So it is not in your limit where, how exactly or to what depth this caustic drugs will penetrate inside your tissues. So you can't control the depth of penetration of these drugs when you are when you're doing, when you are trying to do curettage of uh, using your caustic drugs. How do you, what happens uh, after the curettage is done? How does the tissues heal? That's what is important, right? So what happens immediately after curettage, the entire area gets filled with blood and then over a period of time, there is an neoangiogenesis and then there's some hemorrhage and then there's fibrin formation and then the increased uh, movement of your, or there is more amounts of your polymorphonutria neutrophils into that area and then following that would be rapid proliferation or formation of your granulation tissue and then this granulation tissue or decreased the, uh, it decreases over a period of time or the number of bl blood vessels that is neoangiogenesis will slowly gradually decrease and then about two to seven days the entire epithelium gets restored how does it look clinically so we saw this is the histology that is the healing that we spoke about is under histology right first you know immediately it will get filled with the clot and then neoangiogenesis takes place that is more amounts of blood vessels are produced 
okay or synthesize okay and then your fibrin clot formation and then slowly uh, epithelial cells will start proliferating and then apart from that your even your uh, uh, neutrophils come into picture slowly migrate to the area of destruction because they have to remove all the necrotic tissue or the diseased uh, uh, tissue okay and then they uh, remove over a period of time a granulation tissue is formed and then by about two to seven days within just a week the entire tissue gets epi completely epithelialized how does it appear clinically immediately during the immediate stages your gingiva will appear bright red okay and it appears hemorrhagic following after one week the gingiva will look more uh, it will shrink there will be reduction in the height and there is some kind of a shrinkage of the tissue and then slightly the gingiva can also shift apically then after two weeks the entire with proper oral hygiene the gingiva will get back to health so you can see the normal appearance of the gingiva within about two weeks and that completes your curatage